So uh, to jump straight into it, man, for the viewers, uh, last week I did like an emergency pod where I was talking about uh, Mr. Grush, the, the U.S. military intelligence whistleblower who came forward um, and basically made us aware that we are, in fact, not alone. You know, this is a part of the disclosure that takes a turn recent disclosure, uh, at least set forth by Congress and the Senate. Um, they did like a little disclosure, I want to say back in May, early June, in which they acknowledged a new arm of their military research called ARO, A-A-R-O, that was now tasked with um, documenting this phenomena and trying to create real statistics behind it. But I watched it. It was a couple hours long, and I felt extremely disappointed because it felt like the government was saying, yes, we're tracking it. We know of it, but we don't think they're aliens. There's, no, there's nothing to suggest that these are actually aliens. So that made my mind kind of scramble on the subject because I'm hearing so many things, some other valid names in this whole disclosure thing and they're saying that well maybe these aliens aren't what we think they are and i have a theory i'll, I'll put out there later but uh this david grush guy was a part of this military arm this this branch that is now tasked with researching this stuff and it was like he saw the congressional hearing acknowledging this stuff and said nope y'all not about to do it to us again i got some information and he, the information he said i'm just gonna put it out there dude said we have multiple craft from multiple species so before um i have you chime in on what you think max i'm gonna play uh, a segment that basically kind of sums up everything from news nation and this will be for our viewers so they can, uh, whether they heard it or not, they can kind of understand honest, what, yes. yes, what's exactly going on. So I'm going to go ahead and let's play that right now. Every night. UFOs exist. The U.S. government found quite a number of them, and they are indeed of non-human origin. Those are the explosive allegations from a former intelligence officer tonight in a whistleblower complaint that the inspector general is taking very seriously. 36-year-old Air Force veteran David Grush is exposing what he calls a top-secret military program that has reportedly found wreckage of fully intact UFOs. The government now calls them UAPs, or Unidentified Anomalous Phenomena. For years, there have been whispers and rumors that the government had aircraft of non-human origin. This report is the first evidence it might be true. The inspector general has called Grush's complaint urgent and credible. Tonight, we have a world television exclusive interview with the whistleblower in which he claims we not only have the aircraft, but the government has been keeping much of it secret from Congress and from the public. News Nation senior national correspondent Brian Enton is here with the story, and this is a blockbuster. It is a blockbuster. It's really hard to wrap your mind around this. I've been working on this for the past couple of weeks. I'm still having a hard time processing right. uh, processing all of it. All, over the last couple of years, it sort of became mainstream to discuss UFOs. The government has released videos. They've acknowledged that we don't know what some of this stuff is out there that we have on camera, but this really takes it all to another level. For the very first time, the world is about to hear from a former high 
high-level U.S. intelligence officer who says the government has some of the unidentified craft in its possession. He is revealing these exclusive details about the secret government program. We're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots to the west. Oh my gosh, dude. Wow. <laughs> we have all seen these blurry videos of unidentified flying objects. Video evidence, if you will, that old tales of UFOs may not all be conspiracy theories. In recent years, Congress starting an official U.S. government Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Task Force, recently renamed the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, or ARO. And now in a News Nation exclusive, David Grush, an Air Force veteran, former member of that task force, and veteran of the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, is formally blowing the whistle on secrets he says no one has ever shared publicly before. You are one of the most trusted former intelligence officials in the U.S. defense and intelligence establishment. Yes, I was. You were trusted with the most intimate secrets. Yes. Grush sitting down with award-winning investigative journalist Ross Coldhart, who's reporting for News Nation and has spent years reporting on the UFO question. What conclusion did you come to at the end of your time on the UAP task force? Uh, the UAP task force was refused access to um, a broad crash retrieval program. When you say crash retrieval, what do you mean? Uh, these are retrieving non-human origin uh, technical vehicles, you know, call it spacecraft if you will, non-human, exotic origin vehicles that have either landed or crashed. We have spacecraft from another species. We do, yeah. How many? Quite a number. You're kidding. No. I thought it was totally nuts, and I thought at first I was being deceived, it was a ruse. People started confiding in me, they approached me. I have plenty of current and former senior intelligence officers that came to me, many of which I knew almost my whole career, that confided in me they were a part of a program, they named the program, I've never heard of it, and they, they told me, based on their oral testimony, um, and they provided me documents and other, other proof, that there was, in fact, a program that the UAP task force was uh, not read into. Grush alleges the U.S. government has recovered non-human craft for decades. He's now, I'm going to stop it there because uh, if people want to know more about that, they can go ahead and research it. I know we're just some conspiracy theorists who kind of seen this stuff and always question like narratives. And I believe you and I have talked about this whistleblowing incident when it first happened on episodes prior. I know my position at that time was, wow, this guy is way too enthusiastic about what he is talking about. You know, you know what he if, sounds like, though? What? He sounds like someone who's like just really mad about his job. You know what I mean? Like he sounds like he's ranting. It almost gives him some sort of credibility. He's like, yeah. yeah. Top secret. Wasn't read into it. Total BS. Look, he sounds yeah, really upset. Exactly. And that, that goes to further <laughs> my point of what I was saying earlier is like, this guy was a part of this Aero program at one point. And to see the director of Aero now going in front of Congress and saying, oh, yeah, well, there's no definitive proof that we have that these things are from uh, other planets. Uh, you know, it's just yeah. anomalous. And it's like, no, 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 bro. Don't don't start that. <laughs> do not start that. Or else we're going to do exactly what we've been doing for the last 60 years, 70 years, 80 years, and just denying it. You know, these people are now claiming that Roswell, of all things, the original alien crash landing weather balloon story is, in fact, a real story. It actually happened. We retrieved they have a craft. That craft. Yeah, they do have wow. the craft. And that's that was a perfect segue, actually, because in episodes prior. You and I discussed Bob Lazar. And his mm -hmm. claims that he was working at Area S4, Area 51, and working on what he said was up to 11 different craft. And when they asked him, do you think these things are from different species? His answer was interesting. And he said, yeah, yeah, th they were. In fact, one of these 
has been with humanity for so long, they found it in an archaeological dig. No way. So they found it buried underground with other yeah. remnants of a civilization? Yeah, basically. Basically, so something you've said in the past is Stargates. Specifically, yeah, Stargates awesome. being interplanetary for, you know, having interplanetary uh, purposes. Monoliths resembled something like that, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so just to bring everyone back up to speed on the, the Lazar stuff. I covered it with you on the pr- episodes prior, but I have a clip here from Bob Lazar discussing exactly what was going on at Area S4 and Area 51 in his time when he was working. This is firsthand experience. To the touch. So, um, you know, I would lean and more again, towards a metal. You're not allowed to ask questions. No, the only they they work on the buddy system, so I can only exchange ideas and talk to Barry. Now, this really interferes with science because science is based on free discussion, and ideally, you get a bunch of guys together, exchange ideas, work on problems, and that's how things move forward. But they're so over the top concerned about security, they split everything off, and everybody becomes stagnant. It it. It, it it just destroys any of the progress you can make, or at least makes it go so slow. Um, they, I think, they wind up shooting themselves in the foot. Which is probably why they arrived at this bottleneck that they needed to get this madman with a jet-powered Honda to come in and see what he could do. <laughs> I think that was an act of desperation. I think they wanted someone that thinks out of the box and let let's just give this guy a try here because right. they weren't and uh, they might have done this four more times since. Uh, you know, up to the point in time today, assuming they're still working on this thing. And when you see this craft and you're inside, was there any indication that there was an area that they would use to control it, to pilot? Was there a pilot seat? Was there? There were three seats. They sat around. Uh, the reactor was in the dead center of it, and then equidistant around there were three seats. So, and was- that's all. The there was a. Uh, a large, you would, they're not consoles, they're large rectangular objects, also spaced, equidistant around the center. Um, there's nothing on them, there's no buttons, there's no lights, there's and no control. And they look the same color, the same Everything thing. is the same it's color. It's just a different shape. Right. And um, directly underneath them, there's three levels in the craft. Uh, the main level is what we're talking about. Directly under that, those are the gravity amplifiers, the big rectangular objects. Underneath them are the gravity emitters that look like, for lack of a better word, a trash can hanging on a pipe, three of those. And then the top layer, I, this is just my personal belief, I think that has to do with a, uh, a navigation or their version of a computer uh, with some planar panels, sensor panels around the craft that we would call portholes, but they're not portholes, they're just black areas. And I think that just determines it's you know, position in space. But I was, I I physically was in the center section and I stuck my torso in the bottom section and hung upside down so I could see how the gravity amplifiers were positioned. What is the, the roughly the size of this thing? It's I think it, I don't remember from being there, but um, after all this stuff was over, I had uh, John Andrews, a guy from the testers model corporation. And, you know, we sat down and tried to figure out from what I saw um, and known sizes of things. And we came up with 52 feet in diameter. And so I think fair, that's a small. Yeah. So I, I think that's a fair, a, a reasonable guess. Now you said there's nine of them and you got a brief glimpse at the other ones. Mm-hmm. Were they, how were they different? Oh, they looked completely different. One looked like a, I called a jello mold and it, it looked like a classic jello mold with the, rippled sides to it. One was a very flat disc, um, you know, like a, oh, I don't know, like a straw hat or something like that. That was sitting up on its edge, and the thin part of it had, it looked like a projectile had been fired through um, the edge of it. So I don't know if they were attempting to, to see if the metal could be penetrated or if something, or if that's where the thing came from. Maybe it was shot down. Um but that was the only one where I saw there was, you know, actual physical damage to it. 
And that one was roughly the same size? They're all uh, – They were kind of too far away to, to tell. Hmm. And did – there was several teams that were working on the propulsion system, so there was different pe- teams that were working on these different a- aircrafts? I, I don't, don't know. know. I could only assume. Right. Now, when you're s- sitting in this thing and you're looking at this otherworldly craft, your your goal is to try to figure out how this thing functions. Your goal is to try to figure out how this reactor – I mean, it, it would imagine they would give you more time than just one day to check that out. Oh, it, it wasn't one day. Right. Yeah, I mean, this is – Barry was there. I think Barry was sleeping there. I'm sure they had – now, that that isn't weird. I mean, up at the Tonopah test range where they work on stealth fighters, you know, you go, I think, three weeks on, one week off, and you, you stay up there too. So it's not weird to stay up at the test site. Right. So that was just a little bit from that uh, podcast where Lazar was providing his testimony as to the U.S. government having multiple craft. I said earlier, 11, it was nine uh, that he was talking about, nine craft, different craft. Now, um, an interesting detail that I actually just picked up on is him talking about the amount of craft that basically seemed to unless otherwise stated to be in perfect order you know like no damage yeah. he said those are the those are the there was only one that appeared to have some damage to it and it appears as if we shot it down but the testimony from grush as well as even him about the retrieval program of these crafts they mentioned either landed or crashed so i don't want the viewers to hear this and say well how could something crash and not have any damage we're talking about craft made of elements that we are still confused about 60 70 80 years later yeah and also propelled on with methods beyond our understanding and comprehension so i mean what does a breakdown look like what does a crash land? <laughs> exactly. Like? What does a hydraulic line look like? Yeah. You know? What does an emergency landing look like? It's, exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. And then it's like, what are you going to do? Run away? Your ship don't work. So you can't escape. Well, but it's like, if they landed in perfect order, where are the beings? You know what I mean? Exactly. You would start to think that too, right? Wouldn't us they, having crashed? If crash? the crafts are in running order, then why would they have died in the crash? Yeah, where are the beings? Hey, that's a great... Yeah. That's a great, great point, you know? So it goes to, if you start thinking about this and using, like, just even common sense, you'll be like, all right, well, the government has to know about the origins of these craft. It isn't what the modern disclosure product uh, project on behalf of the U.S. government is providing us information on. It seems like they are trying to disclose the disclosure like they're trying yeah. to be very deceitful i'm just going to say that and i've i've said it in the last podcast uh last week that we have to be careful because we could be falling for a ruse we could be falling for this story that you know these beings are coming from other planets uh to make sure humans are on a good path or to make sure we don't destroy ourselves or to make sure you know anything but the malevolent theory is what humans are telling themselves um and i i don't think that's the best way to approach it uh and i feel like that's also a reason that David Grush went on to go ahead and whistleblow because there's something else going on. But before we, yeah, it's really interesting. It's, it's, it's the, it's the fact that there are nine different and they're all completely different. It's almost like they were either test runs of say Mark one, Mark two, Mark three, Mark four, Mark five, like how all of our satellites and spacecraft and Mars rovers are completely different from mm-hmm. one another. And it's almost like, it almost seems almost very human to me, like similar to us yeah. in the way that 
a Volkswagen is very different from a Ford. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like different countries of origin have their own way and their own special teams working on it. And they can make a similar thing, but it'll look completely different and yeah. probably work it's completely different out to than their... other countries thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, it almost is like a, a civilization from far away has got multiple who knows? They could have a country set up like ours, a territory set up like ours. It might not be a one world civilization. You know what I mean? Well, here, here we go. That, that could be like their right China there. sending a craft or their US sending a craft. They look completely different, but they both made it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you could be onto something, especially because Bob Lazar in that same interview with Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan asked him, like, was there any information that you were privy to on the where these things were coming from? And he says, well, you have to be careful because the way the government compartmentalized this information or these projects, they would tell one team, this is what you're working on. Just try to figure it out. Tell another team, this is what you're working on. Just trying to figure out, leave out the the main picture, the big picture. And just like, oh, you're working on this today. And there'll be just one component that these people really don't know that this is even a part of the craft, except for the people that are there working on the craft. So he said he felt that there were tests that the government was doing to control leaking the information. So they would provide what an excessive amount of detail. At least they felt an excessive amount of detail so that if someone was to leak it, they would know, oh, that detail was specific to this briefing. It was somebody. Yeah, like here. it can only be somebody over here, or exactly. they would tell only one person exactly so exactly who you are. And so that rig the- is dangerous too. That's why oh, yeah. not a lot of people do whistleblow because oh yeah, that's a serious problem. If oh, they yeah. only told you, and then all of a sudden the information comes out, you got people knocking on your door. Well, he also continued on to say that one of the craft that he was working on, the main one, was identified to have come from the third planet in the Zeta Reticuli star system, which is 3 billion light years away. How they identify that? Exactly. That's what Bob Lazar said. He said, I don't understand where they got that information, but you have to go yeah, back I to agree. how it was compartmentalized. And then... Yeah, that's true. Another team could have figured that out. but he'll Could have figured know. it out, He's but what did we just say? You, you know? got these craft in perfect condition. Where's the occupants? Where's the... T- yeah, right. So, could we could we actually know where these things come from? We probably could, and it sounds like the disclosure doesn't disclose a lot about the disclosure. Like he said, like exactly. there's a lot of stuff they left out, or uh, yeah. they just decided to kind of gloss over, and they just decided, I don't know, but. What they don't know won't hurt them. We'll give them some information, and then we'll just tell them, well, we don't know about anything else. And that's why this guy got upset. Like, well, actually, we do know. <laughs> like, oh, we yeah. Know you know. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you're like, you didn't even let me know. I was very high clearance. <laughs> He's, he sounds pretty upset about that. Dude, it, it, I, it gets so crazy because, uh, you know me, I'm a fan of these fringe science shows on like cryptids and and aliens and so i've been watching that skinwalker secrets of skinwalker ranch and um the thing about skinwalker ranch is they believe that there's a, a portal on the property this weird electromagnetic interference this weird gravitational lensing uh they're finding rare earth elements that are used for spacecraft or a human spacecraft in the mesa of the skinwalker ridge and um people are saying you know this is allowing some type of stargate or dimensional gateway to open or portal and things are coming out now most people report very strange anomalies some people say they've seen dinosaurs People have talked about Bigfoot, talked about werewolves. They've um, There's testimony from police officers. All types of people just, it's called Skinwalker Ranch for a reason, right? Just wild to me. They're all different. Not one of them is the same. You would think we'd have 12 of the same mm-hmm. craft, you know what I mean? Yeah. From the same species, the same entities, but. And it's especially like, like out with three whistleblowers now. Like these guys were, we just kind of had to believe them. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I don't know. They got credibility and credentials, but this guy's like 
from the program. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's coming out yeah. with cons. Some We're people twelve spacecraft now. Some people are seeing the David Grush uh, story and his success, and they are following suit in the military. Yeah, you know what I mean. They they're just following suit. They're saying, you know what? Nope, we're going out here to testify about what we know. And basically, I can't find the comment. But in a nutshell, what I was saying is people have to be very careful and not fall for the ruse that just because the government is saying, yes, we know about UFOs, that they're going to be 100 percent truthful because what TV is focusing on with all these TV shows about ancient aliens and Skinwalker Ranch and Blind Frog Ranch and all these weird places um, that host this type of phenomena that, hey, we think we have a, a, a grip on what it is. You know, they're focusing on these metallic saucer shaped things. And my argument is that but the people who are experiencing these things without the all the fancy instruments and the bells and whistles that have no um, agenda on even seeing these craft when the when they are discussing their encounter, it's a. It seems to be like a more spiritual thing, like they think that there's something totally different going on. You know, there's people that don't believe in any type of religion or anything saying this is what I saw. And when. Other people interested in the field that are actually participating in the research side, the scientific research side and how it pertains to things like religion and modern science, they're saying, wait a minute, what you're describing sounds like what has been documented in all these religions if we're to look at history and in some cases the beings that are said to have interacted with these experiencers these people don't believe in god they don't believe in uh, angels none of that stuff but they're talking of literally angels and demons and it is it's extremely extremely weird which kind of fuels in the dire urgency behind these big names from government saying, no, you should look into this a little more. I feel compelled knowing what type of consequences I could face doing this and being so high in the government, you know, Edward Snowden and these kind of guys have been condemned and forced out of the country, ostracized and and told that they were treasonous for saying some of this kind of stuff. You know, keep an eye on Big Brother. They're they're not doing exactly what you think. What would drive these people to get so get so amped up about it and 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 so like willing to sacrifice themselves or become a martyr to this idea that the government's lying to us on this? Um, so I brought this up in the last podcast that was released last weekend, and I'm gonna provide a different angle of approach with some testimony from diana pasulka again she's a professor of religion uh from north carolina university i believe and uh she works with a lot of philosophers she works with a lot of uh higher ups in the pentagon the military side of things because the military as well as the vatican are joining in on this scientific research but the angle they're taking bro isn't being talked about or acknowledged amongst actual government officials it's just people participating in these realms or approaches to this uh, stuff it's just them talking about what they're doing and their updates to their research and i find that this is the actual disclosure that's happening it's not happening on the legacy media Legacy media is giving you the 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 stereotypical, oh, we don't know what it is. But then the government's yeah, right. allowing this information to hit the the underground where the, the real information is really spread. So I'm gonna play yeah. um, well that's their that's their theory. I like I like the way they I mean I don't like the way they do this, but at the same time I think it's really smart because they'll let a whistleblower out. They're like, oh yeah, you could talk about it. 
but then they're going to go into Congress and they're not going to disclose any of the stuff this guy disclosed. And then it ends up here on conspiracy podcasts and it just becomes a yes. conspiracy theory and it doesn't yes. have nowhere near as much credibility as the guy speaking before Congress. Exactly. So they're like, go ahead talk about it. Ain't nobody going to believe you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know mm-hmm. I mean? Nobody's going to believe you. Mm-hmm. So that's what they're banking on and they're banking on everybody buys their testimony and then everybody for- forgets about it. And that's, yeah. But with that, with this, with this, I feel like this is where, this is where like governments that are competing with each other, because this is something that should be approached like all hands on deck. It doesn't matter what side you're on, communist, you know, uh, Democratic Republic. It doesn't matter. We should be working with all of humanity to try to figure this out. But this is where the opposition of, of, of nation against nation really stirs the pot because. We were warned about the dangers of TikTok coming from China. Oh, the U.S. government. Oh, the TikTok is bad for you. It's, it's going to track you. It's going to brainwash your children. But yet TikTok's undermining government policy with all these social media saying you can't show this stuff. But here's a platform showing the stuff. Yep. Well, and yeah, it's, and it's like, uh, I don't know, it's just very, very different to me because like it's just so... I forgot what I was going to say. Don't worry about it's, it. it's, it's just convenient. It's it's convenient for the time that we're in. And this is why I say, man, there's something more. There's something more serious going on here. And for me, like. I can't help but see the relation to religion and yeah. religious studies. You know, Come you can put now. faith aside. You can put faith aside. Whatever you believe in, you believe in or what you don't believe in, you don't. But this is actual record keeping. From yeah, thousands I mean, of it, years it in the past, like it seems like it's a story of record keeping that's been passed on. It's like telephone; it's been diluted throughout the years, and it's gone. It's gone to faith followings. But I mean, it sounds like it's talking about the same things we're well, experiencing here, here, now, but it's kept under like a top secret umbrella. You know what I mean? Well, here, and here's the thing. And here's the thing. I brought this up on the last podcast. I said ancient, advanced societies who we still determine are more advanced than us to this day. We find proof of it every day had the most simple forms of communicating their level of understanding in the reality that they participating in, i.e. the pyramids, i.e. the megalithic structures that are completely after thousands of years of changes in our orientation from the sun, still aligned with respective star systems. The The beauty and the technological advancements were in the simplicity and the most advanced form of information to take place on this planet in my personal opinion is storytelling yes it may change from generation to generation but in a web of lies a strand of truth and the main main subject is never lost you know um the theory i I brought this up in comic books, comics, TV shows, cartoons, this is the modern era of storytelling. The main yeah. population may feel, all right, this is fantasy. You know, these are cartoons flying at the speed of light. Superman arrives before he, or arrives as he's leaving. That doesn't exist. It's fairy tales. It's a story, right? Yet. Modern advancements in quantum entanglement and quantum computing have discovered that particles change instantaneously, no matter the span, the distance between them. One particle could be here in the universe. The other particle could be billions of light years away. The minute one changes, the other one is already changed. It's, it happens together in the quantum realm. So the story of leaving before you left isn't no longer fantasy. That idea that's been. That's been kept intact has withstood hundreds of thousands of years. And kept humans in a state of thinking about it to where it's like, all right, well, we discovered this. No, no, it's already been encoded in us. We've been telling this story forever. Predetermined in the back of your mind. That is exactly. sparks the curiosity about looking into it. And exactly. it's like, I, that's what I like about the whole 
my whole Bible theory is that like there's always going to be a strand of truth in religion, but it's like it gets overlooked because everybody just wants to be right because the world is so divided. You know, what I mean, that's the same thing with like the country of origin thing. You think everybody be all hands on deck. Yo, let's study these crafts. Let's figure this out. Let's try to use this for clean energy. But there's no money in that. Like all the other countries, he said. This guy says that China and Russia have their own unidentified non-human yeah. crafts in their possession that they're yeah. not sharing with us at all. So yeah. everybody's yeah. trying to reverse engineer this technology, whether it be for wartime fighting, whether it be for their own clean energy, whether it be for you know something to benefit their country or something to make a weapon of mass destruction. You don't know what they're trying to reverse engineer it for. Mm-hmm. Well, I would, I would, I would, I, I tend to agree with you on that. Um, I tend to agree with you on that. So I'm going to play this Diana Pasulka uh, interview with Kurt Jai Mungo from the Theories of Everything podcast. Great podcast. It's more in tune to uh, spirituality, hard physics, and the, the, the quest, I guess you would call it, to try to find the, how these are connected because humans tend to be the connective tissue to those two realms, you know, uh, scientific research, religion, curiosity. How does it all fit? This is the perfect podcast for those type of people. Um, but yes, yeah, Diana was on this podcast and she was answering some critical questions. So I'm going to go ahead and play that now. Great book for any of our listeners um, um, by, I think it's Henry Young. And it's about, the belief systems of the people who started the the Russian space program. And so when I started American Cosmic and I met Tyler, he had a very similar belief system. And Tyler was this person who actually reached out to me and he was part of a a secret program. Now they're not, they're known not to be secret. And he had clearances and that sort of thing. And he worked for every, almost every space shuttle launch. Okay. He's a mission controller. And um, he was a very fascinating person. Um, I kind of kept him at a distance for about a year and a half before I actually met him in person. And then he took me and Gary Nolan to New Mexico to an alleged crash site for UFOs because he told me that UFOs from the 1940s, he told me that I didn't believe in UFOs. And he said, you only believe in them as kind of like imaginary things. He said, what if I showed you evidence that? And so this was where I was like automatically suspicious. I was like, wow, you know, this is crazy, but I'll go. Um, because, you know, it's still evidence, it's still data, even if he's it's dif- disinformation, it's still data. So um, anyway, so that's who Tyler is. Tyler is this fascinating space program person. Do you believe that the government believes that they understand what's going on behind the UFO phenomenon? No. <laughs> so they realize that they don't know what's going on or you think that they think that they have a handle on it? I think that there's probably a number of. Of, you know how in the United States we have different, we have Democrats and Republicans and things like that. I think that the government is pretty much the space program is like that. There's different factions within it. And some of them are tasked with trying to figure this out. And some of them think they know what it is about. And some of them know, well, we don't know what this is about. So that's how I think it really is. It's compartmentalized. And that's why I use a lot of, um, I use a lot of references to this movie and book called Fight Club. And it's basically about a this person, well, probably your audience knows, but there's, that's what it looks like. So before it was the invisible college where people work together to, to were scientists and they were secret and they were trying to figure out the stuff on their cover of secrecy. But then it morphed into, I think in the late eighties and early nineties, it morphed into fight club where people didn't even tell each other what they knew in order to keep the secret secrets. Do you believe that we're dealing with multiple phenomenon that have different explanations rather than a single one? Yeah, definitely. So why do you think that? Because. Yeah, it it is overwhelming. Like just for these teams, you got to imagine these teams of people and it's like, they got different spacecrafts from possibly different planets appearing for different reasons. Yeah, And it's like, how does one even comprehend that you can't comprehend how they got here why they're here who they are how they operate them but there's a bunch of them and you're kind of like dude 
I mean, it's how, why are they here? Why are they coming here? Yeah, dude, she goes on. She goes on to say some crazy stuff about that, too. She was like, you know, some of these, yeah, could be coming from planets, but there are some. We don't even know if they are aliens. She was like, I don't know if that that term fits. No, she's saying she doesn't know if the term fits. If the if alien meaning from outer space, if we're considering these extraterrestrials, there may there are some extraterrestrial, but the other. Is she's not sure you can call them aliens because they're not extraterrestrials they're from here they're from dimensions that reside here hmm. yeah i covered that in the in the last week's episode from her interview uh on uh, concrete and project unity uh platforms and so i mean her thing is linking because she's a like i said a professor of religious studies her thing is she was approached by these individuals who are extremely spiritual and have had these success stories in retrieving data, whether it be, you know, the creation or discovery of a new equation that allows for something to occur when in the past we didn't have that understanding. Like basically the download process of the mathematical equations allowing us to do this or understand it. She's saying that these researchers that most people would think, all right, you're just purely science. You don't have this spiritual side or this religious side. She's saying that's actually what the government's leaving out is that the American space program was literally run by proud Satanists. These people were delving into the occult mysticism and labeled it metaphysics, which is basically Western ma- magic. It, it's yeah, it's magic, bro. It's Harry. Magic. It's Harry Potter. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they were studying that and getting results, whereas the Russians at the same exact time did the same exact rituals and felt that they were talking to angelic bodies, literally beings that were described in the omitted books that created Christianity and saying, well, this is how I got this information. It was not out of my own noggin. <laughs> I, <Yeah>. met this, <laughs> met, I, I met these deities and they provided these equations to me. It's like we're in a game of Call of Duty zombies where the scientists are freaking talking to the underworld and creating a portal to hell with zombies. And now you got to go wave through wave up to 36 or 56. You know, <laughs> it's like, dude, it's it's this is all crazy. Yeah, no, nah, it definitely sounds crazy. You know what I mean? But it's like that's one of the things that would never get disclosed. You, it's just so hard to prove. You know, what well, I mean? this is but, what they're doing, though. It's being disclosed like these people are working with the government and coming out about it. That's oh, the thing. About it? They're, they're they're not whistleblowing. They're they're being allowed to. It's like this is where I say the true disclosure on behalf of the U.S. military, in the eyes where everybody's going to see it, when the limelight's on them or legacy media where millions of millions of people are going to see it, they're like, all right, we're going to give you the the clean version. But if you want that explicit mixtape, oh yeah, look into the podcast realm, man. Everybody that we're working with, all our partners that we're collaborating with. They're going to be dropping some fire on the streets, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Take a listen to them and find out what's really going on. And that's how I feel. You know what I mean? This is a well-respected woman that is studying this, working with big names like Gary Nolan, who, I mean, is a huge part of our space program in itself. You know, he's getting now he's talking about it on podcasts like Lex Friedman and All this disclosure is happening. It's now hitting the mainstream. So I think it's a time to be alive. But I mean, while we're on the subject of like keeping things kosher here, did you hear about the the, the Las Vegas uh, craft crashing? The Vegas craft? Yeah, it was like it was like uh, two weeks ago. The Vegas craft. I don't think yeah, so. there was Re- refresh me on that. Yeah, so police uh pull somebody over. Dash are their uh body cam shows. Oh a, yeah, yeah, nah. We, yeah, we, yeah, something we crashing, right? Yeah, so we talked about it. Yeah, so yeah, we yeah. Talked about well, then you 
you had the cop's body came. He was kind of shaking up. He was like, don't ever call me for this again. <laughs> exactly. Like, exactly. He was like, man, this is crazy weird. But yeah, there was definitely something there. Everybody seemed to have the same story. That was what we yeah. heard about. It. And you hear a loud bang. You hear a loud bang to support uh, the idea that something heavy did fall from the sky. And I've watched a number of, you know, channels that have nothing to do with these uh theories or conspiracy theories or even this type of information disclosure stuff these topics they have no interest in it they're talking about it now and they have these basic questions of like well where's the debris where's the debris well ladies and gentlemen we just played bob lazar talking about how nine of these 11 crash landings have any damage to them in fact one of one craft of nine did appear to have damage and they said it looked like a projectile was fired through it and that it had some damage but other than that these things weren't all broken up into pieces like an american aircraft or any other human aircraft would be as soon as you shoot something off of it it's going down and it's exploding and it's turning into a thousand tiny bits yeah and it's like one it seems to be like the way they describe it is it's literally one uniform shell shaped like a disc it's a very strong when you think about a disc it's a very strong shape it's got yeah. a good it's amount of structural integrity to it it's like a yeah. frisbee it's very yeah. hard to break a frisbee you know what i mean and it's very yeah. aerodynamic at the same time and you but don't some know of these craft they were saying was shaped like a jello mold so like think about that yeah. you know and plus we just don't know what type of material or elements these things are made out of Bob Lazar talks about how everything was all a part of it looked as if the entire craft was from from one mold. Like it was formed in all these structures inside. No, no hard angles, all curves. Everything looks like it was machined from one mold, one piece. Yeah. And imagine the structural integrity of that. Exactly. (laughs) It's exactly. a lot to break apart, even CNC aluminum. Exactly. Those car parts are the strongest car parts you can buy because they're from one block of aluminum. They don't, they're not molded together, not welded together. They're not casted. It's cut from one block. That's like the strongest way I feel that we have of making, you know, metal components is CNCing stuff out of one block. I mean, it's, you, and it's, we can't even comprehend how they propel them. We don't know what they're made of or how strong they are, but that's the thing. Like we're, we have, we've talked about in the past U S black budget UFO projects where we have supposedly re-engineered these crafts and they're piloted by human beings. Exactly. And I mean, this is stuff from Northrop Grumman and Mm -hmm. just deep black budget projects that have so much billions of dollars of funding and no one's knowing where it's coming from. Exactly. But we've and I had think, these craft for 40 years. Of course, we're reverse engineering them. And so is probably Russia. And so is China. There's this whole yeah. technological race that's nobody really knows about, most likely. It's yeah. like a different kind of space race. You know what I mean? Exactly. That's kind of my perspective. It's a different space race. Everybody was racing to get to the moon. And now mm-hmm. you got, you know, you had Roswell. Roswell, what, 60 years ago, 40 years exactly. ago? Exactly. And so... What Diana's argument is behind Roswell is that that could have been the Promethean myth that we are all looking for. You know who Prometheus yeah. was? Prometheus mm-hmm. was a titan that rebelled against the god Zeus. And so he gave man knowledge. And as punishment, Zeus tied him to a rock and said, you'll live forever. And enduring this pain with having your liver or pancreas or spleen or something eaten by a vulture every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what they're saying is they're saying is that the Roswell craft could it have been a Promethean exchange where it's like a higher intelligence says, You guys are on the right path, but the odds are stacked against you. Here's a Glock nine. (laughs) <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know? So here's my thing about the roswell crash the way this guy described the craft he said well there was three little things on the bottom it was shaped like a uf it was shaped like a flying saucer it had three little black windows on the top it's like this is what they've been using to like resemble ufos since the 50s yeah and it's like it, and it's like when you think about ufos you're like oh my god they don't look like that that's just our dumb way of interpreting it but maybe we've been 
completely glossing over the fact it's like no this was how it looked in the real wreckage and this is how they all look and they keep yeah. showing up <laughs> they're yeah. based from kind of the same look and we could have easily been overlooking this and being like that's how we just depicted it in the old tiny black and white movie days you know what i mean yeah it's maybe it's not as complicated as we think and it sounds like now with this recent information these ships aren't as complicated looking as we think they are these big mother ships that people have all the fake phone videos of you know what i mean just towering over cities they could be small three three specimen crafts zipping around like the tic tac was and they could we could really have been onto it nailing it on the head from the beginning but we're overlooking that now yeah but maybe we need to go back to the simplest answer because that's sometimes the right one no seriously you know that's what i i tend to faithfully follow occam's razor um but that's just when i choose like all right i'm gonna have to look into that deeper for right now i'm gonna trust source you know and I try yeah, to let right. it rock, but I, I it gets crazy because with the Vatican and the government working in tandem to try to figure this out, one thing that's recognized by the Vatican and their more spiritual uh, record keeping behind the subject, the government ain't acknowledging the orbs and stuff. The see-through craft, the shape-shifting craft, the craft that they, I think Bob Lazar even talked about it one time, da- d- damn near biological craft. Yeah, like almost a, a mechanically biological, what do they call that? Not even mechanically, like there's no, I, the way Diana Pasuko put it in the in the clip that i played last week she said we found elements that look like frog skin some it's type like of machine and it's like a biologically engineered machine craft you know what i mean yeah. it's almost a living entity i think the uh the well in the past on on this ufo subject this is going to take a left real, real quick but i read this book declassified military encounters with ufos and they were talking about the government choosing specific directors in the 70s to promote the idea of these alien craft as a way of like a soft disclosure just to see how people would handle it. And so um, let's see who the director was, just so I don't overstep myself. Close Encounters of the Third Kind was directed, hmm, cast... So Steven Spielberg directed this movie and Steven Spielberg has also uh, done a lot of alien movies. But this movie was special because for the first time, movies had introduced real government information into this phenomena. Right now, this movie talks about an exchange program between humanity and. And these beings called EBN1s, Ebens. They look, they're humanoid. They look like us. And this was a 10-year exchange. That was hinted to in this movie, but there's real books uh, documenting what really happened uh, on that journey. The planet Serpo is what the planet was called. Now, anyway, I bring that up to say this. Steven Spielberg was given the hint as to something that really occurred. And he... Put it out there in the form of a movie. Now, the most uh, recent movie with uh, Jordan Peele, I thought it's funny because uh, Jordan Peele and his movie Nope played around with the idea that UFOs, at least some of them, aren't piloted at all by other beings from other uh, planets, that the UFO itself was a biological entity that could come through dimensions and it got yeah, lost right. on this plane. And so it remained invisible in the skies, uh, posing as a sky or as a, a cloud formation. And every time a human would stare at that cloud, not moving too long, it would get self-conscious and just eat you. And it looked like an abduction, but it was eating you. And so hmm. I think that, that was a pretty interesting uh, perspective because that's not one you hear every day or read every, about every day. Oh, or yeah, read it. Got very yeah so it's like, huh. 
could is there a possibility that you could have been tapped just to put that in, out there because you have a unique perspective as to the psychology of the generation you're a part of? You know, you've had success with like spreading messages and awareness in other movies while making it a comical twist while also driving the point. You've had success. Let's try you out. Could that's be. what we're talking about with like keeping it in the back of the public's mind you know what i mean exactly yeah. Yeah, exactly so it's like it's like all right there's a real possibility there i won't shun it but now i'm starting to hear this on mainstream and underground information sources or media right. so um <laughs> this is a subject that that really we're gonna have to pay attention to in the days to come because more and more is being put out there but more and more is like trickling out there to where it's like all right i really have to find this or you i have to be a part of this niche community that's into this subject hardcore yeah right exactly it's a it's definitely a hard one to find but yeah. i don't know my thing is i do like i like to try to i like the whole connecting the dots between the religion thing because i would really love to know what the origins of that is and then it's uh-huh. You would love to know what the origins of these entities is that we're supposedly speaking with or maybe that are making these craft. Like, what's their... Because, I don't know, I, I feel like sometimes, like, the human civilization, it seems like an alien civilization would be so foreign to us. But yeah. it could look very similar. to They could have their own religious beliefs. They could have their own God, their own Bible. They could well, have what their if, own... What if we're stuff. separating them for no reason? Yeah. What if we're right. literally separating them for no reason when they both previously, to our knowledge, never existed? It was never, never possible. You know, God's not real. Aliens aren't real. Bigfoot's not real. Yet somehow people describe seeing all three. That's a good people described it. People ascribe to seeing it. You know what I mean? And having these connections. So if I'm going to be open minded about one subject i have to be fair and be open-minded to everything and if i'm going to be open-minded as well as curious i'm just going to look into it and try to make up my mind for myself you know and i encourage all of our viewers to do the same you don't got to take my opinion for it you know the viewers you guys are your own people go ahead and uh just do a little bit of research you can't stress that enough as a conspiracy theorist i could put it all out on the table max could put it all out on the table but you're going to feel the way you feel just taking yeah, all exactly. the information. You like know, I'm so they're... not skeptical about so many things, but then I'm so skeptical, skeptical about certain things. And it's yeah. weird because I consider myself to be an open-minded person, but even yeah. in the back of my mind, I'm like, I'll shut certain things down, but I'll have to go back and look at them again. Yeah. yeah. I mean, half the time it can either be really simple or it can be so far beyond your comprehension that you're just never going to be able to come to grips with it unless you give it further review. And then you can actually compare both sides with data on either side. And then you could probably connect the dots between maybe somebody who's right here and right on the other side too. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like politics. You never be on one side or the other. You got to have a broad spectrum of information coming in from everywhere. Exactly. Exactly. And I think, um, you know, to see that, the Lazar story is, is, is being rehashed. It's been, you know, brought up so many times in, in recent um, years because it seems like, you know, he was so far fetched in what he was saying and that the government tried so hard to discredit him. But now there seems to be this type of um, yeah. awareness going on in, in, in academia, but the government, the information it provides is still so closed minded. Yeah, it if sounds like they have a it sounds like they have a certain understanding now, or at least they feel that they've come to grips with a certain understanding that they're ready to start letting the American public debate about it just a little bit with very limited amounts of information and stir the pot a little bit. You know what I mean? Or maybe they're trying to gather attention from other people who are going to see this information and maybe they're very knowledgeable and they have a different perspective and they'll get on board and help them try to figure this out. Maybe it's a cry for I think, help. Yeah, I think I think so, too. But um, my mind was working in mysterious ways. Um, and I started to say this earlier about the Facebook comment. Well, my Basically, from my end, I've been doing this conspiracy thing for years and I've noticed a lot of the 
the the typical stereotypical stuff that you would see in like a conspiracy theorist main catalog it's like all right well i watched all these movies and i seen the triangles the 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 left yeah, eyes yeah. and i've seen the handshakes and all the little context clues and yeah 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 you, you get used to seeing that but um remember we're talking about people saying roswell yeah it could have been a promethean event right well yeah with this disclosure stuff all the tv shows the the Ancient Aliens, the Beyond Skinwalker Ranch, Skinwalker Ranch, the, all these fucking shows, man, are made by the same company, Prometheus Entertainment, the light bearer. But like, look into them, ladies and gentlemen. Now, that's an interesting, I feel, that's an interesting name, too, because that I could feel be their Promethean moment. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, I feel like there's a huge I feel like there's a deception going on that the government has always been into the occult. They've always studied the mystery. They've used it to empower some of the same families throughout history for hundreds of freaking years. Rothschilds, you name it. It doesn't matter. These people that run the media, they're still benefiting off of it. And they're the ones paying at the end of the day for most of this disclosure because they're running the TV shows 24-7. It's not the government who's making 24-7 updates about the subject matter it's these private entities that are indoctrinated into the occult mystery paying for this side of the information to be put out there and unfortunately it's aligning with the same thing that the government is saying but leaving out a a couple key differences like the spiritual relativity to it that this stuff has been talked amongst religious cultures for thousands of years and that the catholic church and the christian church has kindly conveniently omitted a lot of this information while retaining the source within the vatican walls and that people like diana pasulka can go on these platforms not that the government and the vatican are okay with disclosure they can go ahead and start tying in the loose ends off the legacy media airways to the niche communities that get maybe a hundred thousand views a month and saying, well, yeah, this is what the data is actually supporting. This yeah, is what right, David right. Grush is right. saying. It's like, ah, oh, there's something more nefarious going on, man. There's a reason why the government just told y'all that about aliens, but then lied and said, there's no connection. Like I'm here to tell you they lied. So it's like, ah, oh, I'm starting to think that, you know, the occult is still doing what the occult has been doing. And it's just been keeping its secrets to itself while doing what it has to do to update the people as much as, you know, as their limits can uh, withhold. So uh, it's a, it's a weird, messy time to be alive, brother. Yeah. As far as, as far as this disclosure. Yeah, it's definitely pretty wild. This disclosure is pretty wild. I'm interested to see what comes out afterwards. I'm interested to see who else is encouraged to come out and talk about it. You know what I mean? Because, I mean, the U.S. government possessing 12 non-human spacecraft. You don't know what kind of dimensional entities it could be. Maybe they are from here, and that's why they're so interested in our planet. Maybe they share the same planet we do, and the planet's not in a great way, right? I know it's like global warming is a tough subject, but you can't really deny the planet's in kind of a... Well, you see, Russia's about to... The world's in turmoil to keep draining the resources like this. You know what I mean? Plus, and then you got the whole world war and the threat of major conflict. Think about this, man. These freaking families who control the media, it's the same families, man, that control the media. How come these Norfolk Southern, these, these black water companies, media companies, all of a sudden there's a refocus from all right, this disclosure is occurring. These big stories are dropping. David Grush, a military whistleblower, one of the most well-rounded, respected military intelligence officers that we've had, comes out and undermines everything we just said last week. Oh, but wait, a submarine goes down. Guys, let's focus on yeah, right. the media. Let's on put the, the counter the down. Oh, wait, the, the, the Wagner group is marching on Moscow and there's about to be a mutiny in Russia. Oh, wait. There's always something else that's conveniently the bigger story 
when this is potentially the biggest story for humanity in thousands of freaking years, at least ever since we yeah. stopped working with aliens using well, yeah, their crap. There seems to always left be them here. There's something they this. think is more important, and it's not more important. It's just you know, could easily it's their it's their little distractions. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, we're talking about we're talking we're, we're getting told that aliens we got 12 craft or a nine craft from different species but we're That's focusing insane. on five people who were uh, i mean i hate to say it five people who chose to pay a quarter of a million dollars per seat in a garbage can that went down into the ocean yeah nah that was pretty rough <laughs> you know that's a pretty I mean, rough decision to sit with but yeah, I mean, I get it. It's it's so weird how they thought that was the most important thing at the moment. There was counters, countdowns, like a ball dropping in New York City on midnight. I was like, Jesus, really an oxygen countdown? It's kind of yeah. Morbid. So it makes you think: was that <laughs> thing was that thing really designed to go that far down, or did no, the country, <laughs> did the nations of the world need a big story, a refocus? It, it, because it definitely um, wasn't designed to go. That I mean. Far down. My girl said this to me, and this is kind of funny on a side note. She said, well, Vince, uh, you know, you've heard about the conspiracy of the Titanic. And I'm like, well, which one, D? And she says, well, you know, J.P. Morgan Chase and the Rothschilds had a lot of money into that that uh, that company that owned the Oceanic, uh, the the, the sister to the Titanic, as well as the Titanic and the sister sank for insurance reasons or whatever. And then all of America's wealthiest men were on the Titanic, but then the J.P. Morgan and his crew got off at the last minute, and all the other men on that uh, ship were yeah. opposed to the creation of the Federal Reserve. Yeah, and so and they it was, think it was that they about were, the Federal Reserve. you know, that the yeah. Rothschilds and J.P. Morgan were were in cahoots and you know sank that ship to guaranteed the federal reserve system that would ensure that their family structures were the most powerful men in the world and that this ocean gate was them blowing that ship up because it's like yo you're going down there what if you see proof that this was sabotage Hmm. yeah maybe but at the same time that's that's an interesting theory to me in my mind it's like We've already had so many underwater submersibles and 3D scannings of the ship. And like yeah. that's where you're kind of seeing the evidence of sabotage. But I think in this case, it was just a, a tragedy. And it was a company that just did not... Cash grab. It was a cash grab. They did not cash do grab. things right. There's evidence to support that this submersible was inspected several times and postponed several times by somebody who said it is not yeah. safe to go at what what is it two miles underwater <laughs> yeah dude, <laughs> like, like four thousand meters thinking? underwater or something two Six miles thousand? underwater they're like hell not nah, this thing is not safe enough and they fired oh, him they, they fired he, he him advertised like, nope. that that uh contraption to have I want to say it was like one to ten million pounds of pressure to counter the six thousand pounds per square inch pressure from the outside of the tank yeah, but it's at those like, levels it's, it was like oh yeah uh, right but your but your logitech playstation controller yeah your logitech playstation controller with xbox buttons did yeah, it yeah like that's you know, what it, it uh, <laughs> they're saying the ship sense. that the uh that they tried to get inside the wreckage and then the uh submersible the the uh I don't even want to call it a freaking submarine. I'm going to call it the Untasebot. The Untasebot, and it got stuck. That's so, what they said, but then they yeah. said the, the wreckage was found 1,200 meters. Oh, it imploded. Top. Absolutely. It, yeah, it definitely well, imploded. It was, definitely yeah, wasn't. It just you know turned I mean? to it, a pop can. Yeah, no, nah, that was tough. But, like, it's there's also evidence, apparently on the news, funny enough, but they on local news, they said that they name dropped like Boeing and the University of Washington. They're like, nah, they helped us engineer this. They helped us engineer this. Nah. Like, oh, I've actually never met you before in my life. <laughs> like, don't do that. That's <laughs> rough for them. Yeah, they're like, don't bring us into it. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Come on, <laughs> pop. Do with this stuff. Yeah, we come on. Never. Me. Like, you're going to go out there and the guy is dead. You know, the guy who created this, you know. Uh, 
he was on yeah. that on that submarine. I guess he was trying to like real hard to get this uh this one guy to go. I have the article up here. Oh my gosh. They were trying to get some I some guy with money. <laughs> they were trying to get him to go. And he was like, no, nah, I'm good. And then you know, the ticket's 250,000. He said, No, nah, I'm good. Uh-uh, it doesn't look safe. So the 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 creator of this program, this um uh, his name starts with the S, the guy who built the thing. He was so desperate to get him all at the last second. He was like, "Yeah, before we leave, I, I, I'll let you come on, man. One fifty, come one fifty, jump on it with us. Come on, dude." Says, "No, nah, I'm not. I'm not getting on that shit. It's not <laughs> about the money, dog. I'm it's not about the money, dude. Me it's, out. It's, I'm it's not getting on that. <laughs> yeah, it's like no, nah, that's I'm, I'm, going I'm good on, on water that. Water in that monster can you call a submersible? Hell, no, nah, bro. And then <laughs> he went down on? there, and nature does what nature does, and." uh Said mm, they got him to go. More that human. Was one of the guys? Yeah. That's oh no, he like... never went. No, it was just oh, the owner. God. He just seen the guy yeah. who's knew how to sounds play PlayStation. Like he had faith. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like this pro gamer had faith. Yeah. That yeah. His submersible was gonna work, and he fired everybody that tried to deny that his creation was gonna work. He's like, I'll prove everybody wrong. Got yeah, the I'll show that guy. Finally went down there, and then was crushed. So it is a tragedy, but yeah, I mean, you know, it, it could have been they saw do, a UFO man. stash and the UFO said, "Not today, boom, you're done." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like not like you. You look at submersibles for like rated for two miles underwater, and they don't look like that. No, <laughs> like, no, they just you know what I thought was funny is that the government said, "Yeah, we'll go down there and search for the wreckage using our own, and it's rated for that." You know what I mean? And that's, yeah, they're like that's we exactly use unmanned they ones. They're like the size of they're like two feet long and like a foot yeah. in diameter, and they just kind of swim around down there. <laughs> you know that would have been more of like, an look, experience. We know how to do it. That would have been more of an experience. Like, what if the dude would have took all that money for that submarine and just built like underwater drones that could be piloted by these people so that they can control them? Yeah, and Why go not? down like, there and see it for themselves. That'd be so much better because who really, unless you're like some sort of like top level scientist, you're not going to have access to go on an expedition to the Titanic and and control one of these underwater submersibles for like, for like $10,000 a pop. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just go pilot the submersible. That would be dope. You know, it'd take like a two hour course or something. It's probably so crazy that like you (laughs) died that way though. That's such a bad way to go out. It's just all you hear is. He was yeah, like, is that a whale? Like, nope, Sarah, it wasn't. That was death. Uh, was that you, Gary? Death you knocking. Come on, dude. We're two miles underwater. We can't it's crack a death knocking, and, and uh, you're up next, Sarah. And it's like, yeah, all right. Man, that's tough. That is tough oh, for him. God. It's a tough way to go out, but I mean, he, it's, well, it's at least they missed the alien invasion. Down with them, you know? At least yeah, they missed least the least alien least invasion. invasion. Maybe yeah. that's where they were trying to go. They're like, ah, screw it. We'll make a new home out of this. Could you imagine yeah. if the end of the world is fucking Godzilla underwater eating up submarines? It is aliens coming from outer space and dimensional rift walking Sasquatch werewolf Slendermans. Oh my God. I don't want to think about the apocalypse, bro. Because as of right now, it's looking real trippy. That apocalypse DLC is going to be crazy when it drops. <laughs> Wild. <laughs> the apocalypse dlc ladies and gentlemen i think first. we just found the title <laughs> i think we just found the title to this episode ladies and gentlemen i think we're gonna wrap it up there i think this one was a banger bro i'm not gonna yes, lie sir. i think That's this one was banger, banger information coming out right now you know facts. What I mean? it's crazy facts facts so ladies and gentlemen as you know Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Yurt Pod. That's Y E A R T P O D. You can find us on Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, Spotify, and now Amazon Music. That's Y E A R T P O D. If you guys have any questions for us, Max and I, you can hit the Yurt Pod Gmail. So that's yurtpod at gmail.com. Submit any questions you may have. If you want us to bring it up in the next podcast, any topics. Uh, and for me, I mean, me especially, Davici, I would like the Bigfoot proofs, ladies and gentlemen. You feel like you've seen anything weird, even if it's a UFO in the sky. 
hit my line. All right. Yes, sir. I want to know. I want to know. I want to see. Want so, to know, fam. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So, ladies and gentlemen, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Max, you enjoy the rest of your weekend. I'll see you tomorrow at work. Yeah, hey. Pork. Yep. Weekend's too short. Facts. <laughs> <Come laughs> <on, man. laughs> <laughs>